All right, the conversation goes on. If you're just joining us, this is to this. Um, this is News Hub. Why am I thinking of business, David? Why am I thinking of business? Oh, I think I'm expecting you. some some money, like in dollars. I'm, I'm you know? rubbing off on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us again on News Hub. Um, it's been an, a wholesome conversation around real key issues, real key issues, particularly um, particularly the NLC, you know, minimum wage bruhaha with the National Assembly and um, a few corruption cases here and there, um, uh, here and there. Right now we'll be switching gears, we'll be heading on to talk about, well, Women's Day is, has not ended. Yes, we're talking about nation building, uh, the 21st century women, security and COVID-19, specifically this time around our focus is going to be um, uh, in, in Ogun oh, State and oh, sometime. Um, Funke Egbemode, the Commissioner, Honorable Commissioner for Information and Civic Orientation, um, Ocean State, will be joining us uh, to give us a perspective on how far so far with women in leadership, women in politics, and women, um, the well being of women generally uh, um, in, in the country is, and what is the way forward. All right, Honorable, um, thanks for joining echo. us on uh, today. On There's News a lot of Hub. echo and I. Uh, I can't really hear you very clearly. Oh, I really do hope the network is going to be very nice to us today. We've been having a bit of a glitch, but we'll take it slowly so you can hear us clearly. Thank you for joining us on News Hub, Honorable. Um, I heard just a little bit about uh, women generally in Nigeria. I didn't quite get the full question. I'm just welcoming you and saying thank you for joining us on the yes. program this morning. Good morning, and it's good to be here this morning. Good to be here. My name is Funke Gwemade, Commissioner for Information and Civic Orientation, Oshun State. Thank you for that reintroduction. Let's talk about International Women's Day, which was just um, a few days ago. Tell me. The, the theme of this year is about challenging, challenging anything that you want to challenge as a woman in the society. What is your, how, what does it actually mean to you, the International Women's Day, specifically the theme for this year's? Uh, for me, the International Women's Day has a lot of, uh, so it's always a day for me to ruminate and uh, think about women, about how far we have come in a society that is uh, largely uh, about men, about men who got there before us, and we trying to play catch up. Uh, so it's been a long get to where we are. The challenges were there. The challenges are there and they will still be there uh, next, this time next year. Um, what we have to do is to continue uh, to improve on what we're doing right now. It's not um, an easy ride. It's not a tea party being a woman, especially if you are in the public space. Uh, we already have um, assignments given to us to fulfill in the universe. And so we continue to do what we have to do uh, as a natural assignment. And then so when you step out of your home, you step out of your kitchen, uh, the heat that you get in the society, you add to the heat that you get at home in your own kitchen. So it's been a long haul. It's been a long walk. And um, I am all, only hopeful that it will get better because now we have people who inspire us. We have uh, women who are doing very well in all their chosen careers. We are everywhere. Women are everywhere. From the cockpit to the boardrooms, we are everywhere. So uh, it's encouraging that these challenges are surmountable these challenges are not what can uh, hold us down yes they are going to make things a little bit uh, difficult for us to get as focused 
I think we will get there. We'll get there. Now let's talk about um, women representation in politics. A study of women in politics in Nigeria showed that between 2011 and 2015, um, Ocean State um, recorded uh, the second highest number of women representation in the southwest region. Five years later, is this still the same or do you think there's been an improvement from um, the data we had back then? Uh, women representation in politics, I think quite, like I said, it's cracking. Ahead, speak, ma'am. Okay, so let me make it very clear. A study online um, about women in, um, in politics showed that between 2011 and 2015, Ocean State recorded um, the second highest number of women representation in politics. Now, this is five years later. What improvement has the state seen when it comes to having women in public offices or in politics? Oh. The network, the network, the network, David, the network is not making, you know, this conversation any easier for us. But it is something very salient um, that we need to actually discuss. Yeah, um, it is, it and is. I was really surprised that Ocean State in the southwest had, um, you know, uh, the second largest uh, women been, representation. Been, in Ocean State has done so well when it comes comes to the issue of um, female representation in um, the state's capital and um, the state's, state's cabinet. And uh, I like where she was going to, where she said um, they're drawing their strength from a few, a few, a few women, and uh, where they have they have made their marks. And then um, we now look at the likes of our own Okonjo um, Gazewala, who is the first uh, black, first African, and the first woman um, you know, to, to, to to occupy the, the the DG of the World Trade Organization. It's a multilateral organization. And then, and then, and then we have we have uh, yes. I'm told that we have um, um, the we have the commission. Yes, the yes. I'm glad that you are back because this is a salient issue that we need to discuss here. Um, we're talking about um, women representation in politics and public office, and I was making um, reference to a study that showed that Ocean State as at between 2011 and 2015 recorded the second highest women representation in politics so i want to find out from you if there has been some sort of improvement from that we are talking about five years later has it improved is it the same or is it lesser uh thank you uh oshu has always been sensitive we've always had government and leaders that are sensitive uh to women being in the public space and we once, don't forget that we once, in 2007, we put the Oshun produced the first female speaker in the country, on, right Honorable Patricia Olubumite. She came from, she, she, she came from Oshun. Uh, it's, it's been um, a continued struggle to maintain that because if you are able to do that in 2007 everybody expects us to uh do better sometimes it doesn't work like that because of um uh shift in political uh affiliations and you you when women have to call uh contest for elections it's a different ball game from getting appointed um, I would say that this present administration has uh, continued to uh, improve on what we had in the years past. Uh, we, we have women uh, not just monitoring, not just being in charge of the Ministry of Women Affairs. Uh, we have more women in uh, heading agencies. We have women doing more than just being women leaders and chair leaders in Oshu and we intend to do more. We still have a woman in the House of Representatives, even as we speak, and we intend to continue to improve on that.
We've also produced a female deputy governor. And so for us, it's um, a steady It's indeed a, a steady movement for Ocean State. I, I want to believe that is where uh, she was going to. It is a steady movement from where they were five years ago uh, to where they are today and where they so hope to be. If we still have um, uh, Funke, if we still have Ava on the line, let's, let's move gears now and discuss some very salient issues, uh, uh, very salient issues. Ocean State did receive uh, their own chunk of the COVID-19, uh, the uh, AstraZeneca vaccine a couple of days back. It's about two days if I, if I stand corrected. Uh, uh, if you can, uh, bring us up to speed. Uh, have we began the vaccination? What are the plans for the vaccination? What modalities has the state put in place uh, uh, for the vaccination? True. Um, delivery of this first batch on Tuesday night and it got to the state uh, via the Akure airport and then we commenced the um, administration, the vaccination yesterday morning with the uh, frontline health workers we gave it was administered on our frontline health workers in the state capital, we will continue this morning, thereafter we moved on because the first phase, uh, the first phase is supposed to include uh, strategic leaders, and so we moved on to the government house to uh, administer it on the the governor. It was administered on him by the chief medical uh, director of the Union Shun Teaching Hospital, uh, the deputy governor, the governor's wife, the principal officers. Uh, and other strategic leaders like Professor Isaac Adewale, the uh, former Minister of Health. And um, I also got a job yesterday. Uh, so that's the first phase. We'll continue this morning with uh, the more frontline workers. And you know, you have frontline health workers, and then we still have other frontline workers, the support staff, those who are constantly uh, going out, constantly uh, working on getting things done. That's where we are. And uh, as head of the uh, communication system in the state, the ministry is uh, saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that we are there to ask, uh, to answer frequently asked questions, to dispel rumors. There are rumors out there that uh, this vaccine is supposed to make people sterile and people are, uh, have all kinds of conspiracy theories about it. Um, that's part of what we are also going to be doing every day. Uh, we have jingles out there to ensure that uh, people fully understand that uh, it's a task that must be done. Yes, the way the vaccine came uh, quickly, people are suspicious. But then don't forget that the way the virus came was also uh, sudden. So we'll continue to educate. I, I mean, you, you, you sort of answered the question I wanted to ask you about people's perception as regards, uh, as regards um, you know, taking the jab. Um, but but I, I, I'm, I'm tempted to ask what challenges you foresee in administering these jabs to other people because sometimes Nigerians can be very stiff in their perception about certain things, more so about things that regards their health. What challenges do you foresee, um, you know, uh, around administering this vaccine to uh, people in Ocean State? And what can the people, the government, do to ensure that people do not lose out on, you know, getting the jab? We have good storage facilities. We will, sensit we will sensitize our people. We will assure them... Oh. That's why I mentioned that I have to faint. You are likely to die. Um, even if we can't remember uh, uh, Mizu's uh, vaccination when we were young, I'm sure we, uh, most mothers, most uh, words can remember 
I'll touch the um, oh, uh, I mean, the network should be good to us, um, as it is important that people get sensitized and people get knowledge and people understand that this is actually for their good. No, she, David, she, she's speaking. She got the job yesterday. She's speaking. She's very okay. I mean, I, I really don't have an idea where these perceptions have been birthed from. I mean, we, see, we saw President Buhari on Saturday with the Vice President and all the, you know, um, top dignitaries get their own job, including frontline workers, yeah, you know? Yeah. Uh, talking about uh, uh, misconceptions or perceptions, uh, if you look at it, the bigger picture here for me is um, it is business uh, for certain individuals. And then uh, whether you like it or not, you get to realize that certain Individuals, individuals are trying to outplay the others uh, when it comes to which vaccine is is um, it's safe. Is safe or safer? So you, you just cannot rule that out. There is a huge possibility. I did see a video uh, a couple of days back where I, I I can verify it, but then but then a close look at the video. I saw that video too. So you begin to wonder if actually that lady was vaccinated or they just it was just a, a look like a vaccination. So too many conspiracy theories that um, makes it a lot difficult for government, state governments, and federal government to begin to convince uh, uh, citizens that uh, look. This is a safe way to go if we must win this fight against, um, against COVID-19. Uh, but then, uh, like you did ask her, uh, the, the conversation is still ongoing. The state government should still keep doing what they need to do. Uh, the awareness campaign should be stronger. Uh, the convincing, that is the word, the convincing campaign mm -hmm. should be stronger exactly. uh, across the board. Uh, but then, uh, that, that, that for me is, is it. It's a competition. We, we know the Pfizer is there. We know the, which other one, the Johnson Johnson. AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca. Yes. Then a lot of people are coming out with their own vaccine. So it is who gets a, a better chunk of the market. That for me is also a huge concern. Here. And for me, I think the, the, the matter of um, perception or uh, um, people not trusting the vaccine is, I think, a mistrust, you know, of what has happened before now. Mm. Remember, um, they were asking, I mean, how many people have we seen um, that uh, uh, have died yeah, from this thing yeah. apart from, well, people in, in quote, the highbrow areas. This is not for people in, in the mainland. It's not it's for people who... It's yeah, exactly. Um, it's uh, not for uh, them. Virus uh, and the rest of them. Yes. And the, the issue of, um, of, of the palliatives as mm. well. Like, these things were made for us. You, 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 you hoarded them. Why yeah. did you hoard them? Uh, I, I, I think I, these are places, these are foundations of the mistrust that people are having. Yeah, that If yeah. you did this to us earlier on, yeah. <laughs> I mean, why should I trust you to take this in the first place? Yes, I, 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 I wouldn't agree any less with you on this matter. It's a foundational thing in how government has been able to handle the message, the, the passing the message across to, to Nigerians had been a huge, um, a huge concern. Uh, uh, trust is earned. You, you earn trust. Uh, it is not something that just comes. All of, you earn it, and you earn it by the things you do, by the signals you, you send, by perception that you, impressions that you make out there, uh, make people begin to either trust you or not to trust you. But for me, the, big, the bigger picture here is we need to stay safe. Uh, and then um, I wonder why anybody would want, not want me to stay safe. I wonder why um, people would want to think that um, the vaccine is meant to kill or to, it's meant to reduce population. And, and then you see, you, I mean, like you did say, we've seen a series of videos here and there, even foreign videos suggesting that um, uh, it's a ploy to uh, depopulate um, the African Some continent certain regions, and all of yeah. that. So you see, you really won't blame people completely. But then it's about, you see, uh, my school of thought, I'm, I, I'm told that words are seeds. Mm. What's are seeds? So the seeds would either grow based on how you would either germinate based on what you give to it. It's either you allow the seed to die with a different uh, you know approach, or you you feed the seed uh, to grow fat. So what is our government doing, or what are governments across the board doing? Some governments are busy you know pouring water on that seed, and the seed is growing. This All right. Growing, yeah. um, I heard she's connected with us. We wanted to ask a question oh, okay. on security, David. Uh, well, yes. Let's let's. Uh, so so good to have you back, um, 
um, Honorable Commissioner so good to have you but we apologize right. for that breaking I'm transmission here. yes these are issues beyond our control uh, let's quickly look at the issues around uh, well, we want to say congratulations on uh, the vaccine and um, how, how much your state is doing so far around the vaccine we all really want you to continue we need to reconvince the Nigerian people that uh, this is the way to go in terms of uh, uh, you know staying safe from COVID-19 then let's move the conversation in very short minutes yes uh, Oshun State has been in the news in recent times around security matters. Where are we right now? The Amoteku conversation and all of that. Where exactly are we right now with Oshun State? I would say we are in a good place. Uh, it's work in progress, but Oshun is uh, more secure than uh, people tend to think. Uh, you don't find our commissioners moving around uh, with a retinue of uh, security or uh, we we've we've had a couple of um, incidences uh, just this year uh about abduction but those were uh, uh local stuff and we were able to quickly retrieve uh the people that were abducted um the amotekun people the amotekun is a major force it was conceived Long before everybody, even uh, uh, um, in the in the region, uh, latched onto it. But the entire region is working together, and we have our people everywhere. So that was uh, uh, that 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 is why it's usually easy uh, for us to trace if there is any incident at any on any road in any area. Uh, the Amoteku people are local people. They are people who live here, and they quite understand the terrain. They know where someone is likely, uh, who, who has done that, is likely to move towards. So because you have that local intelligence, and uh, we keep uh, gathering that information, and I've been involved uh, in monitoring how those things happen. The fact that we know where to go makes it easier for us and more difficult uh, for those who want to commit crime uh, to do so. It's becoming increasingly uh, difficult. And people know here that uh, you can't want to do crime and live in Osho. If you want to do crime, you're going to have to relocate. Here, it is too hot. We have a um, uh, good security network, and we continue uh, to improve on it. Kuro is very, very... Uh, um, aware of what's going on in different parts of the country. And the security meetings, the security apparatus here is quite on top of its game. And it's a 24-hour thing. It's quite a huge, it's quite a lot of work. Uh, mm. The people here are working on uh, security, the police commissioner, the uh, special advisor security, and all the different uh, um, uh, security agencies, they work yes. together. So it makes it a lot easier for us. Yes. There is no rivalry. They all know that we are working towards the same goal. Honorable. So we are in a good place. Honorable Agwemode, um, speaking of synergy, what is the situation like between... Um, the local security outfits, which is the Amoteko, and the police in the community? It's just one united front. We do not, uh, the police do not think that it's something that um, is, should be left for them. Uh, the Amoteko people do not feel that they are superior because they have local intelligence. And so it's just one front that is maintained. Because the enemy is one, we cannot afford to have a divided out. In Oshun, there is no divided out. The governor is directly involved as the one who knows that uh, it was uh, one of the major things that he was entrusted with is the security of life and property in the state. So there is no rivalry here. They meet, they, uh, they, they work together, and... There is no um, problem getting everybody to get on board if we have to all move out. Any kind of enforcement is done together, even if it is to enforce no mask wearing. It is, it is done together. We are together here. 
interesting place to land the show, Honorable Commissioner. Thank you for your time. We sure do hope that the synergy between um, uh, security apparatus in the state remains uh, uh, together, like you just said. Thank you, Honorable Commissioner, for information and civic orientation, uh, Oshun State, or better still, State of Oshun. Uh, we had that conversation a few, few months ago. <laughs> Funke Egbemode, thank you for your time with us on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks wait, wait before, before you go, is it State of Oshun or Oshun State? You are right, whichever one you call it. <laughs> you are right. Have, Have a great day, madam. Have a great day. How you feel? Thank you. Okay, so, um, Mercy, I, I think uh, I, we, I have, guess we have coasted. I guess it's country of Nigeria. Okay. And not in Nigeria. That's a different dimension <laughs> to this conversation. <laughs> you know. But then, uh, beautiful conversation yeah, we have. Actually... We just hope that this network thing, uh, you know, becomes um, a thing of the past in Nigeria. Uh, we need to deal with this network uh, matter in Nigeria. Uh, the so we 5G conversation, conversation. We, should, we should move. We should move as quickly as possible. All right, that's where the cookies crumble. That's where we say thank you for staying with us on uh, news of this beautiful Thursday morning. It's been quite, in, I mean, educative, uh, uh, quite inf informative, and um, you know, just mention it. So we'll come your way again tomorrow, uh, God willing. Thanks for staying with us. I am David Dubarbadike. Have a great, uh, beautiful Thursday. And I am Mercy Frank. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Hopefully, we'll be back tomorrow for the weekend edition of News Hub. Stay safe. David, yes. David, yes. David, David, yes. your face mask. Is that where you're supposed to put it? No, it's, don't, it's don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry. Wear your face mask. David. Have a great day. <laughs>